All right. So now let's see um, our next question. Question four is S F six polar or non polar. So now for this one, this is a very fair and interesting question because it definitely comes with a, a few layers to it. The first thing we need to do actually to find out if it's polar or non-polar is to actually uh, draw its Lewis dot diagram. So considering it's SF6, let's just uh, draw what we do know. So let's just start with how many electrons they have in total. So we have first um, sulfur, okay, and sulfur likes to have six electrons, okay. And now, with that being said, fluorine likes to have seven electrons, but there's six of them. So in total, we'd have 42 from this side. So in total, between the six and the 42, we have 48 electrons to account for. That is quite a lot. So, <laughs> with that being said, let's go ahead and get things moving in regards to that. Um, yeah. So, 48 electrons. Now, let's see what we do. We put the sulfur in the middle because that's really the point of basis we have. And um, after that, we kind of try to surround it with the fluorines because it's six and sulfur just happens to have six it's one of those rare I guess elements that doesn't mind having more than eight electrons in this valence shell so it breaks the octet rule so actually I'm gonna add that note this breaks the octet rule okay and now, with that being said, let's go back to this and keep filling out the um, sulfur. And bam, looks quite messy, I know. Uh, but this is just kind of to get the visualization of what the possible um, Lewis dot diagram will look like. So as you can see, I'm filling in every single electron there is and we're almost there there we go so this is the Lewis dot diagram okay so now with that being said <laughs> we kind of have to navigate and count all of these but we know that each one gives us eight so eight here eight eight so that's so far it's 8 times 3, 8 times 4, 8 times 5, and 8 times 6. And we know that 8 times 6 does indeed equal 48. So we have the right amount of um, electrons there. So now for this one, uh, you can kind of start to tell whether it's polar or non-polar, considering it has literally no other space to do anything else. But actually, I do have this handy page here which sometimes you are required to, to memorize. But if we scroll all the way down our Vesper theory, so actually before we do that, you notice where it says electron groups, okay? That is the number of pairs you have, whether they're lone pairs or in a bond. So sulfur, okay, its electron group is six. And most things like to have an electron group of four, because that's the octet rule. Four pairs, eight electrons. But sulfur is like, yeah, I don't really care about that. So that's how we got there. So we scroll all the way down to six. And if we have six bonding groups, which is what we have, six bonds here, and zero lone pairs is an octahedral. Okay. So if we drew it out in like open space, this is kind of what it would look like. Sulfur being in the middle. Okay. And with fluorines just in every corner here right and each angle 
is a 90 degree angle. So no matter where you look at it, there's a fluorine 90 degrees away from that fluorine. So because of that, okay, you can say that they're pulling, which is electronegativity, even if it's just slightly, they're all pulling equally in directions that end up canceling each other out. So this would be like the forward and back, and this would be up and down, and this would be left and right, okay? Everything is equally being pulled in every direction. So to answer your question, if it's polar or nonpolar, sulfur, hexafluoride, which would be a name hopefully, uh, monosulfur hexafluoride would actually be nonpolar. Now, there are many ways you could have figured this out. Uh, the valence uh, gives us a hint because when you draw the Lewis dot diagram, um, if you see like any uh, lone pairs, you almost are notified right away that it is going to be a polar molecule because uh, that electron, that lone pair likes to do a lot of the work and pull towards this, towards that direction. But when you see that there's no lone pairs, you um, compare what's bonded and consider that everything here is a fluorine. That means everything here has the same amount of electronegativity pool. So that 3.98 minus the 2.58 is going to be the same for every direction, which is why it's a nonpolar molecule. Now, interesting enough, this is a perfect example of a nonpolar molecule with polar bonds. I'm just mentioning this because some questions might even ask that too. Uh, the reason why I say it's a polar bond is because I mentioned the electronegativity. When you do the electronegativity of fluorine minus sulfur, and you look at the values, 3.98 minus 2.58, 1.4, okay? And right there, uh, if there's a question that actually asked for this, I'll explain it in further detail. But that falls in the range of what is considered a polar bond. So yes, all these bonds are polar and they do have an electronegativity, negative electronegativity going out and the sulfur is a positive one. But because they're all pointing the same, I mean not the same, in equal and opposite directions, that's why it's nonpolar molecule. Okay? So let's move on to question five then. Let's see what actually what they say first. Um, exactly, it's a nonpolar because Vesper theory, because there was six point ion range symmetrically, the bond dipoles are canceled. So they do mention that the, the bonds are indeed polar, and because of that, it's canceled. So this is correct. All right, so let's move on to question five.